This place is amazing. I am literally in a floating library. Like, it's kind of scary. <sighs> different of a vibe. <laughs> here it's murky outside it's fall weather I have some fall plans for today my husband he's working tonight he didn't work last night so he's around to watch them so I can go out this afternoon and see my cousin my best friend she was my maid of honor we're gonna go to a coffee shop and I also want to take you guys to this wonderful library I found it's total fall academia vibes it has that really cozy scholarly feel and I also am going to get outside show you guys some of these fall leaves we're just doing a typical Mrs. Midwest fall vlog. So yes, we are in the bathroom. I'm going to show you guys a little bit more. We're not fully done. You see behind here, we have to put some covered um, doors on still, but we're so close to being done. I haven't even shown on Instagram like my full bathroom. So you guys are going to see that. But before we really get started, I wanted to show you how I style my hair now um, that I kind of have a bit of a bang going on. I got my straightener on right here. We're facing this way. Um, because it's the only way I could figure out how to record <laughs> with decent lighting. So anyways, um, you can see that it's shorter in the front. And then I also have some like postpartum, let me see. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. I have some postpartum hair growth. Oh my goodness. See that? This is all new postpartum growth. And then on this side of the same thing so in order to disguise that and also just because i'm getting older and i think bangs look good on me this is what i do Ooh, i'll be in frame i do this and mind you i just blow, blow dried my hair and i had i put mousse in it so it's like kind of thick feeling like when i don't put mousse in my hair after a shower it it just feels really silky and it kind of lies like really flat and so I've been adding mousse to kind of you can see it has a little bit more volume so I'll do that and then I'll still do the it's a 10 hair care um on like from about here down just because I found that's like the one thing that really protects my hair This hair just grows so fast these days. because I was like thinking of all of you watching me do it so I struggled you can see this one is like really nice this one's a little worse for wear but basically the point is to like flip these ends 
out and to the side. So. One thing that's changed with me is like, I'm not afraid of the hairspray anymore. Like, I think I used to try to get so much, so many days out of my hair that I would avoid putting products on top because I was like, it'll add to the dirtiness, it'll add to the grease. But now that I wash my hair like every other day, it's like, just use the hairspray. Like, get the style that you want. That's the bags. That was horrible. That was a horrible tutorial. I apologize deeply. We'll see if this makes the vlog. <laughs> pooch it's just what you get when you had kids I still have a bit of like diastasis recti yeah you can see it there you may be
This place is amazing. I am literally in a floating library. Like, it's kind of scary. <sighs> Look at that, that's wild. But it's, got, it's so cool, I love coming here. It's like total fall academia vibes. I cannot wait till I come and there's like winter out the windows. It's, it's just crazy. sparkles on the inside of my eyes like I used to do in high school all the time I used to put sparkles on my eyes and I hate it today and it's like driving me crazy when I see myself in the viewfinder I'm like why did you do that I don't like it anyways small problems um, this is the van. Well, I don't think you guys have ever seen the van, but yes, I drive a van now. Um, I love it. This was actually my grandpa's van. <laughs> my grandpa was actually an engineer for GM and he was extremely particular with his vehicles and he took them like into the shop all the time and he made sure they were always really clean. And so this van is in amazing condition and we bought it from him. See, he can't drive anymore. And so it's like a little piece of home every time I come in here. It just reminds me of him. But isn't that library just like the cutest thing ever? It's, it just gives me all the cozy feels. Didn't even know this existed until recently. <laughs> Google searching different libraries to visit because one thing I like to do once or twice a week is I get a couple hours to myself and I like to visit libraries. I like to do my YouTube work. It's just nice to get out and like do things for myself. I mean, it probably seems in these vlogs that I'm constantly doing things for myself because I tend to only vlog on days where there's a lot of time for just you guys and me. So I woke up super early this morning, which is why I'm might seem like a little bit lower energy than normal um but <laughs> I woke up really early and I couldn't fall back asleep so I watched um parts of my other like two or three fall vlogs just to kind of like see what did we talk about what did we do because like I needed some inspiration watching back those vlogs it's crazy because I just seem so different I look younger I feel like I act younger too just so high energy it's kind of funny like the fall vlog before getting pregnant I'm like extremely high energy and it's like this really like cute a amateur style vlog. Like someone wrote a comment that they, they like, they miss those, um, amateur style vlogs. Like when I first started the really low quality ones. And I, I feel that like there's some nostalgia there for like the old style. I get that with YouTubers all the time. And then there's some people who will frequently comment on new videos or vlogs where they're like, you seem so authentic. Like you just you seem like more yourself. You just seem so much more open. Um, and I appreciate that too, because I've been trying to be more open in my vlogs, but also I think it's just as you're on YouTube, you just start to care less about presenting yourself in a way you have in your head. You feel more comfortable on camera. You feel less stressed when you're vlogging because you kind of understand how you're going to edit it. You understand the camera and like all of that. Um, and it's just more of a pleasant activity too now for me now that like I'm more experienced and I think you can kind of like sense that coming out in the vlog but it, it is kind of crazy I've been doing this like for a few years now and it's it's really weird to see yourself change like not just becoming a mom but like just a how I've aged and how I do my hair differently and how my house has changed like looking back at some of those old vlogs I couldn't believe some of the home decorating that was going on in my house I was like what like what I had that on the wall and it was like really jarring almost because even though I live in the same house to the same husband same dog it's just things change without you even realizing it before your eyes it's it's really crazy oh and like the pregnancy vlog was really funny because like 
I could tell I was exhausted during the whole thing. I was so low energy throughout pregnancy. I was tired constantly. And like, that's what I tell everybody who like, they're about to go from like one to two children. It is easier taking care of two children, even a baby and a newborn or a baby and a toddler than it is to take care of a baby or a toddler while being in your third trimester pregnant. It is so exhausting. Like at least it was for me. My biggest pregnancy symptom was exhaustion. I was constantly so tired. And even after giving birth, I was really tired. You could, I feel like you can even sense that in my vlog from the spring, my postpartum vlog. I was really tired and I needed a nap. And that's why like my biggest focus this year for as far as like health and fitness has just, I, I wanted energy. I wanted to get fit, get strong, get some muscle, get some of that baby weight off me so I could feel like energized again. And I think I've achieved it. I think it's almost time to make a postpartum like video where I discuss my transformation postpartum and how like I've coped with the changes to my body because my body is not the same as it was like three years ago. It's not, but I do fit it like finally after as of this like last month and a half two months I fit back into a lot of my old clothes I'm really feeling good um still dealing with some diastasis recti and so I'm doing a pro a program called mutu for that it's this is not sponsored this is just something that's changed my life <laughs> it's a program called mutu it's a paid program that has like online uh modules for you to follow for workouts that are safe for postpartum women, they strengthen your pelvic core and they help address issues related to diastasis recti, which is where your abs, it's crazy, your abs, there's connective tissue between your ab muscles and it weakens and separates as you expand. And I had a ton of amniotic fluid. I had a ton of babies, ton of babies. Well, yeah, but I had like really heavy babies. Like they, at 38 weeks, they were eight and a half pounds each, which is big. And so <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I didn't go to 40 weeks. Oh my goodness. But I had a lot of amni amniotic fluid, a lot of big, like, um, big baby. And so I stretched a lot and my abs and the back to back pregnancies too. My abs, they took a beating. <laughs> and so I have about, it's called like you, you measure the separation between your abs and finger widths. My belly button is the last to close. It's like still, I think one and a half, um, finger widths separation. I have a mom belly button now. It's like, it's cute. It is what it is. Um, but that was something I really wanted to address this year because diastasis recti and like weak pelvic floor can cause back pain. Um, I think sometimes people think they have long lasting effects from like an epidural needle or a spinal tap, which at first I thought that's why I had lower back pain. But upon researching and talking to my doctor, I realized I just had a weak pelvic floor. And it's really weird because you wouldn't think, why would my pelvic floor affect my lower back? Um, but it does. <laughs> it's all connected, all of that like muscles, because if you have a weak pelvic floor, your organs are kind of slipping out and your back's overcompensating and there's just all this stuff going on. So why I started this program, it wasn't to bounce back. It wasn't to snap back. It wasn't to look like a, a supermodel and it wasn't to get back into my clothes from college or high school or to be skinny or whatever. It was because I had back pain. I was feeling like my organs were falling out and I was just feeling gross and not strong. I was carrying Troy in this car seat and it was just so heavy. So I was just really weak, essentially. As far as physical transformation, I wanted to give it some time. I'm almost 10 months postpartum. I'm almost back to normal, normal, as far as like energy and feeling strong and healthy. Um, so I'll make a video about all of that. I mean, it's kind of interesting, I think, to see how people uh, un like weather the changes of becoming a mom. So anyways, I have to jet. We have to meet my cousin. She is like the best person. She is. She came to live with us for about six weeks after my C-section with Troy because we just didn't know how it was going to go. You know, we had a baby and we like, I wasn't going to be able to lift Bodhi and it was just like really crazy. So she came and lived with us. Um, she's also a homemaker. Her, her husband's in the military. They live in another state down South. And so she's here for like a few weeks this fall and I am 
soaking up the time with her. I'm so excited. She's like my best friend, like a sister to me. So we're going to do that. The place we're going is super cute. It has like lanterns and cute coffee. Um, and it's like 15 minutes away. So I got it. I got it. And this is my like little nook. We in the renovation included like my little craft space. And this is also where I do the letters for you guys. Um, I've been getting my PO box mail, and if you don't receive a response, um, it doesn't mean I haven't read your letter. It's just I can't respond to everybody. So I try to pick a bunch of letters, especially if you've sent me a gift. I try to send a thank you card. It's a lot to keep up on. Um, but it it warms my heart and it keeps me going. And it's what's motivating me to make. Uh, more videos than six a year because honestly, I don't know like after becoming a mother it, it was really hard especially getting pregnant right after Bodhi and so But getting your letters like consistently throughout the year, even though I wasn't making content It just made me feel like my content still matters people want to hear from me. I'm going to come back. So anyways, 
In this vlog, I don't think we're gonna be cooking anything like I usually do or sewing, but I still wanted to give you something that might be helpful to your life. Um, and, and because of that, I wanted to quickly talk about um, photos, printing out photos, and photo editing, because I think this could be really helpful for a lot of you. So essentially, some people are really against filters because they, I think they have this like negative assumption that it's always bad, like it's always inauthentic, uh, to change your like the to change the saturation in a picture or to add contrast because it changes it from the original photo but I kind of believe that like photos don't capture real life as beautifully as real life is um it these it does like suck out a lot of the color and it does like affect the lighting sometimes in a weird way and I think there's nothing wrong with um, editing and tweaking your photos because you can actually end up with some photos that look really, really good. And I know a lot of people, they rely on like uh, professional photo shoots to get cute pictures of their family. And like, those are great, but it's also nice to have everyday life pictures look good. I think that filters can be kind of like an art form for photos and make photos look better, especially when you're printing them out um, for your wall. As you guys know, I have my uh, photo gallery over there and this whole album that I keep touching um, is all of these photos are edited like to make the lighting look better to make black and white and it just makes for a much more appealing experience when you're looking at the photos because they look more like film photography um, and just nicer. I'm not saying you guys cannot print out your raw iPhone pictures. I'm just saying if you want a little bit more of that photography kind of look, um, I'm going to give you some options in this video. So yeah, so cute. Um, I will link this below. This is a really inexpensive photo album from Amazon. So, and this is also like how I edit my pictures. So the first way is if you have an iPhone, I know not everybody will, this is how I edit it. The first way is in the camera roll app, you can edit the pictures in the app and you can increase the saturation. You can apply one of their filters. Their filters are a little extreme, though their black and white ones are pretty good. You can add contrast, adjust the um, exposure and things like that. So I always recommend for photos, it's good to increase the saturation, sometimes decrease the vibrance, maybe increase it, just play around with those two um, options. And then usually a little bit of increase of the shadows or the black point will make your photos stand out a lot more. The second way is through Lightroom. It's simple, you upload your photo into the app and then you kind of play around with the tools. There are so many YouTube videos about how to do that. But in Lightroom, I usually um, saturate the orange tones to make like our skin look less ghostly. <laughs> saturate or desaturate depending on what we're looking at. You can change like outdoor grass to look a little bit more blue. You can play around with color in general to make a nice black and white photo. And then sometimes I'll add on a grain on top so it looks more like a film photo. The third option is Visco, V-S-C-O. You again, upload your photo into this app and then you can play around with their preset filters. They'll recommend you some. You can scroll over to all presets and use their free ones. You can also go into the photo and usually when I do this, I'll use one of their preset ones and I'll lower the intensity of it and then I'll go into the normal um, editing functions and then I'll play around with contrast, exposure, saturation and warm tone. Warm tone is making sometimes making a photo cooler or warmer. Um, and I'm telling you guys all of this because you can really make a normal photo, even a normal selfie of yourself, just look a little bit more um, sharp. It can make your Instagram, social media, all of that just stand out a little bit more. Social media is a huge part of a lot of our lives, even our jobs, our dating, all of that. And I know we all want to have like the cutest pictures of even our kids, our pets, our homes, and ourselves. And so this is just uh, like me as an influencer, like giving you guys some of the tips, some of the things that I like to do. And then another app I really like, it's called Dazcam. This is newer to me. I saw um, another influencer using it. It makes your photos look like film. And I'm actually using Dazcam in part of this vlog for some of my video to look more like film. It's just really cool, really retro. You can upload your photos into it and it will automatically apply a filter or you can take a fresh photo, 
with certain uh, camera filters. And then lastly, I just wanted to touch on how I take some of my pictures. So for my YouTube thumbnails, I will kind of like pose in front of the camera, like eh, all these faces, and then I'll take a screenshot and then I'll often put a filter on top of that. I also did this recently with a photo of me and Troy and I've done it before with me and Bodhi, especially with your if you're with little kids. Sometimes it's a lot easier to just set your phone up and take a selfie video, um, not holding it, but like set it up on a windowsill or something and just kind of like play with your kid and then turn the video off. And then you can scroll through the video to see any like freeze frames that look really really cute and then you can screenshot the freeze frame and then edit it like increase the color or whatever i'll show you a few examples of photos oh this is a really good example of using portrait mode on your phone a lot of phones have the option of portrait mode this um tends to snag on like a main focus and make everything out of everything else blurry this again looks more like a professional photo but it's just for my iphone Here's an example of the Daz cam editing that I was referencing. You can see in the corner, there's that like timestamp that looks like a film photo. It's also more washed out in certain in areas and it just looks more like film photography, but this was taken on an iPhone. Okay, and then my last two examples are from the gallery wall. This first one was taken before we had children. It was, uh, oh, there you guys are. <laughs> this one was taken before we had children. It was taken on portrait mode and then I majorly increased the saturation, the contrast, and the exposure. Um, and I did that all on my phone, printed it out. It looks like a professional photo. And then the last example, I promise this is the last one. This was taken the day I had Troy, actually. We went um, up north for like a little walk and I went into labor that day. And this was taken with portrait mode of Bodhi. Um, you can see the blurry background. I increased the saturation on this as well as the contrast like usual just in the app on my phone and printed out large an 8x10 from Walgreens, put in a $1 frame from Walmart. It looks like a professional photo. I, I kid you not. I don't think I'm just gassing myself up. I think it's beautiful. Um, it's such a hack. I, I really don't think a gallery wall is outside the scope um, for your average frugal house, housewife homemaker. So I would love to see you guys having some fun with your photos. So thank you so much for watching. I know this is a little bit of a long vlog, but I will see you guys tomorrow. If spring is the season that wakes me alive Then fall is the season to contemplate life, oh yeah. I don't know what is it exactly in this time of year That makes the melancholy me reappear, oh
say goodbye to summer. in a t-shirt even though it's October because I'm a huge fall denialist even though I like the colors I with my wardrobe don't transition to sweaters for a long time Ha <laughs> ha 
surviving today was hard in the sense that i've been exhausted all day so on days where i um miss a chunk of sleep and i'm just like not feeling good like kind of nauseous all day just gross um some things that i do to make sure that i still have a good day is making sure i feel nice in my clothes today this was super casual but like i did my hair uh i didn't feel like a like a bridge troll um making plans with other people like that really helps especially like when you can have extra help with the kids but also just more stimulation and activities for everybody i actually find like getting out of the house or inviting people over is great on days where i'm low energy um thirdly like taking a shower doing that kind of stuff like making sure your hygiene is good and refreshing yourself with exercise breakfast water like happy things, like happy videos, happy music. We did it all today. That's why we were listening to Kung Fu Fighting on loop this morning. My cousin came over according to plan. I almost called her and canceled because I was like, oh, I might just need to nap this afternoon. But I decided not to nap, so I'm extra tired for tonight. So hopefully it like works out. And you know what? In the past, I probably would have like scrapped the vlog or just like not wanted to show footage or not wanted to try to vlog today because I wouldn't have wanted to like not be 100% enthusiastic and exciting for you guys. But like life is full of ups and downs and you just so happened to catch me. I planned this vlog for these two days and I didn't plan to not be sleeping, but that's real life. Um, and I do believe you can still have like a good day, even if you're not feeling amazing. Um, and then also, I just got to say, after struggling with sleep and maintenance insomnia for many, many years, it comes and goes. It got really bad after both pregnancies and like postpartum, like the hormones that really triggered it. What I have found is I would used to lay in bed and I would think about how the, like the fact that I wasn't sleeping and it would make me really, really upset. And then I would think, oh, I'm going to have a bad day because I'm not going to feel good all day. And I would just dread, 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 dread. And it was like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like I didn't feel good, but I was grumpy about it. So I did have a bad day. Now I have this philosophy um, and it does really work for me. My philosophy is that because of the joy of the Lord, the Holy Spirit in me, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit, if you know what I'm talking about. It's part of my religion as a Christian to like, to know that even though you're a wretched sinner, a person who struggles with sin, a person who is not perfect, to know that God can help me make up the difference. He is the one who supplies my peace, my joy. Um, gentleness, all the things you need as a mom. And I find that even just taking time to pray, taking time to center on the Lord and on the fact that like, I cannot do this without you, Lord, because I am sinful, I am selfish, and I am crabby and tired. I need your help. That like centers me. And it also reminds me that God is sovereign. He is there. This is just one day in his grand design. It's not a big deal. And if I choose to have a good day, oftentimes like say for miserable tragic things happening or really really hard things i can often have a good day and it's something that has really changed for me in the last few months on these days where i have this sleep maintenance insomnia or just a rough night in general i always just think now it doesn't matter that i didn't get sleep because i'm definitely gonna have a good day tomorrow <laughs> and lo and behold that gives me peace. It makes me feel more relaxed because all day, instead of dreading, like feeling sick and dreading having a bad day, it's so weird. Like as you're dreading having a bad day, you're experiencing a bad day. Now, instead of that, I'm looking forward to the day and I'm looking forward to enjoying another day. I'm looking forward to my children and I'm, I'm just grateful. That's something that has just been so beneficial in motherhood is just your attitude. Your attitude affects so much. The thing I've been learning is like, Okay, so I didn't sleep. 
I'm going to feel nauseous. I would rather be nauseous with a good attitude than be nauseous with a bad attitude because the bad attitude is truly what makes the day horrible, not necessarily the difficult conditions I'm living in. So anyways, that is my little spiel of like, even these really cute vlogs where I get to go to coffee, I get to see my cousin, I get to do all this fun stuff. You know, I'm still a person and I still have like things come up that are tough, but I hope that you guys can be encouraged in that and, and know that like in motherhood, we're all going through this together. Um, and it's, we're not a monolith. We're not perfect. YouTubers are not better than other people. YouTubers are not more together than other people. We just tend to show you the cute parts of our life. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the fall vlog. I'm going to include as much fall leaf footage as I can. Um, thank you for watching. If you're interested in more of this kind of content, I have like three or four other fall vlogs, um, and a few other motherhood vlogs. I learned today it is so hard to vlog as a mother. I don't know how mommy YouTubers do it like at all. It's like every time I like picked up the phone to be like, okay, so now we're outside and blah, blah, blah. Like I did in, in all my other vlogs in the past. Like there would be a child suddenly like whining in the background that I wouldn't give him my coffee cup. <laughs> like silly toddler things, but like things that just need my attention, you know? And vlogging is very hard with two children. I'm kind of proud of myself for doing it, but I also chose two days that were really easy. You know what's also so terrible? I finished editing my YouTube video yesterday. And as you're uploading to YouTube, you need to keep your laptop open, otherwise the upload stops. And all day in my mommy cleaning mode, every time I pass by the laptop, I would just boop, close it. Cause like, I don't want the kids to use it or mess it up or whatever. It's just my instinct is to close the laptop. And every time I stalled the upload. <laughs> so that's, um, that just further shows. I was not firing on all cylinders, but I still had a good day today. Don't forget to like the video before you go. Join the feminine family. All you need is like an email address. And that is all for now. Ta ta for now, I shall say. And I hope you guys have a wonderfully lovely and autumnal week. My beautiful sisters.